All right, everyone. Um, welcome to the inaugural, the first um, meeting of the Dynamic Data and Capabilities Working Group. Um, so I'm, my name is Pedro. I'm uh, the lead of this uh, working group. Um, thanks for joining. Um, so if you could uh, put your names on the attendee list of the uh, notes, please. I would much appreciate it. I just pasted the, the clip pad link on the chat. So while, while you're doing that, um, I'm going to ask, is there anyone volunteering to take notes? Can you do it, David? Cool. Thank you. I can do it. No Thank problem. you. Thank you. Cool. Um, so this is, uh, if you have access to the grid pad, this is the agenda we have uh, for today. Uh, also, you can add more items on the agenda if you wish to discuss anything uh, other than, the, than what is already there. Um, so feel free to add anything. Uh, so to start off, uh, for the first minute, since this is the first meeting, I'm going to um, well, lay out the goals of the working group and point to, point to all the resources that we're going to need to coordinate uh, the work going forward. Um, so first, uh, the goals of the of the working group, and this is something that is not written in stone; it's kind of in motion. But I think it sums up in an abstract way what what the goal is is to research the research and development of building blocks that enable collaborative applications, providing solutions for security, identity, access control, concurrency, synchronization, offline and near real-time collaboration on top of IPFS. Um, so these are the broad goals. And there is a repo here um, where we're going, that we're going to use to uh, coordinate. Uh, all this work. Um, inside that, there is a, a bunch of issues. If you got, I'm going to share my screen um, so that you guys can see what I'm seeing. Cool. So, all right. So here are the current issues that uh, we're we're trying to to track. Um, there are like three big groups of things that uh, we're going to address, we're going to try to address first. Also, this is like an open list. Feel free to add your, your, your suggestions or your questions uh, here. So as I was saying, three main groups, CRDTs. Uh, if for people that don't know what CRDTs are, um, there's, there's a good sum on, on, um, on the resource further down on, on the grid pad here. Sorry, this is getting in the way, yep. So there's a CRDT research link here um, for a repo that if people want to use to uh, know more about CRDTs. Uh, so basically they allow, in a very summative way, they allow for um, collaborative, uh, real-time um, shared editing of data structures. And one of the use cases would be like a Google Doc, for instance. Google Doc would be a good case for people changing the same data structure concurrently. And so it requires no, um, no uh, synchronization between the peers. So it's kind of fits the, the centralized model really well. And it's kind of a recent um, thing, a recent uh, byproduct of, um, of research. Um, so uh, there, are, there are a bunch of, of issues open uh, here. Um, I could we could go through the, those later if uh, we could go, to, go through those later if you want to. So first one is CRDTs uh, to enable the collaborative uh, uh, editing of, of data structures, and the other one is identity. So um, how uh, nodes know about the humans behind or the 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 the, the, uh, the persons the, the person behind the um, each one of the peers, and how do you prove uh, certain things? To each other. Uh, the other one is David coined it is crypto cryptographic cryptographic ACLs. 
So a way to uh, give permissions and take permissions from those uh, peers or from those people uh, over certain resources that we want to manage on our applications. So those are the three main groups that we're going to try to tackle. As I said, people can join in and, and add issues and, and, and remove the issues. This is what we're going to use to coordinate all the, the work. Um, there tend to be fairly high level issues and then more specific implementation ones uh, are on the specific uh, repos or new repos, for instance. And I will later give you an example of, of that. Um, also, we have an IRC channel. Um, I have a link there on IRC channel, so feel free to, I'll uh, have notifications up for, for that. Um, there's also this bi-weekly meeting that we're, we can use to, to sync up with each other. Um, and there's a bunch of list of current endeavors going on, which are more applications um, and libraries like byproducts of, of this, uh, this group. One of them is PeerPad, which is a decentralized collaborative near real-time editor that uses CRDTs underneath. Uh, it's, there is a first alpha version out there uh, and uh, uh, there are a lot of people working on, on a new version of PeerPad with a lot of new features, has its own um, uh, repo, which you can, you can join in and, uh, and check it out. There's YIPFS Connector, YGS is library for the implement CRDTs. So uh, YIPFS Connector is something that takes a y YGS and uh, uses the IPFS pop up network to, um, for nodes to discover and talk to each other. There's also Peer CRDT. Uh, Peer CRDT is a library uh, that implements op uh, uh, operational CRDTs um, uh, and in, a, in an abstract way. There's also PSRDT IPFS, which is an implementation uh, of that over IPFS. So like the transport uh, of that over IPFS. And there's a bunch of them. One of them is Tevery, which is like a decentralized, eventually consistent uh, key, key store, KV store over IPFS. And again, feel free to add any endeavors that you want to start working on or have been working on here uh, on this uh, readme page. Um, more resources, let's see. Um, I think that's it. Um, so any question or suggestion so far? Uh, I have a couple. Mm -hmm. Sure. So um, I think one thing that hasn't been said is essentially, so there has been a lot of development on creating these building blocks for distributed applications. Mm -hmm. And like for the last year, uh, Pedro has been like pretty much like carrying, like just taking this ship forward and like working with other people. Some of them are present here, but he has been like creating all of these building blocks by himself to create apps like PeerPath. Uh, now we have this working group that the purpose, uh, as Pedro explained, like it is to continue this development, but as the name suggests, like working group is to uh, include more people in the conversation so that more people can uh, participate, contribute their time, their ideas, suggestions, and so on. Um, and, and so like right now, um, like the working group is expanding, right? So Pedro is like the lead and pretty much like the, the only full-time person. And, and he will be interested in knowing is like who is available slash interested on on being part of these uh, challenges like being part of this development um, and perhaps with that like it would be good to do the round of intros so that everyone could like explain like who they are or just introduce themselves and explain what they are interested and in, what they have been doing so far mm -hmm. so that everyone is on the same page yep that's the the next item on on the agenda Mm -hmm. um, I, I can I can go go ahead and, and, and give the first uh, the first one just just to set the template. So yeah, I'm Pedro. I'm lead of this working group. I've been working for for protocol apps for a bit over a year, mainly on on JS JS IPFS related uh, stuff and all the libraries underneath. Um, all not all, but some of them uh, and. Before that, well, I've, I've been a software engineer for 20 years. I'm mostly interested in, in decentralized, well, distributed systems and more lately decentralized uh, systems. And 
Yeah, I like, I like, um, I, my interest in this, in this working group is making the goals real. So enabling centralized applications, um, creating the Google blocks that enable centralized applications to be easily created by anyone. Um, so it, I can perhaps go um, and say what I've accomplished since the last meeting. There was no last meeting, so like last two weeks. I have, I've added the, further down on the notes, I've added um, uh, what, I, what I've done. So I've been working on PSRDP and PSRDP uh, IPFS. Um, and in progress, I have uh, performance issues of a CRDT over IPLD. So for those that don't know, IPLD is, uh, um, uh, is like a, a language that, that, describes, that allows uh, graphs to be built on, on top of IPFS. Uh, and CRDTs and uh, PSRDT IPFS uh, is, uh, works on top of that. So, and there are some issues in transmitting operations, CRDT operations on top of that, and I'm working on that. And there's like, there's a bunch of set issues that I'm working on. I finished the, the stats, uh, which allows us to have more transparency over which uh, peers uh, consume uh, bandwidth and, and data. And now I'm working on a connection manager to allow all the application to manage connections uh, between different peers. So, and that's why you can, uh, the goal is to state what is the importance of a connection to another peer, the importance to your application, so that the connection manager can gently allow, uh, allow or just in, a, in an informed way. Also allows you to have some finer grain control over the connection, uh, the connections that you want to have on your peer. Um, I'm blocked in a stupid thing. I want to set up the working group waffle board. Uh, there's a permission issue, I guess. I'll, also, I'll forward that up to the group, probably. And next, I'm going to finish the first version. For the next two weeks, I'm going to finish the first version of the PTP Connection Manager. So just what I described here. Um, that's it for me. Brandon, do you want to go next? David, David Diaz. David Diaz, are you typing? Yes, sorry about that. I, I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, we, we can hear every keystroke. <laughs> That's a pretty loud keyboard you got there. <laughs> I think, I'm so sorry. I think Pedro was saying words, but all I could do was read, read your typing. <laughs> I was saying words, you're right. Uh, okay. uh, I'll mute myself from now on. Um, I can stop sharing. That. Sorry. That's amazing. Cool. Uh, in, in well, there's my list is reorders. I don't know. In next to my list is Lidl. I don't know. Hi, Lidl. Hi. You want to go next? Sorry, Brandon. Uh, oh, whoa. it's always keeps changing. All right, yeah, Lidl. So, sure. Uh, I just joined. Uh, we we had a in browsers working group sync, and we paused uh, it uh, so that we could join, and. Uh, I've been working on browser extensions since, I don't know, 2015. <laughs> but uh, I joined uh, uh, Protocol Labs this year and uh, like started pushing this uh, in more uh, serious uh, um, scope. And uh, not sure what uh, to say uh, more. Uh, apart from that, I feel that uh, the work we are doing in browser extension related to exposing window and getting zero of uh, having uh, embedded JS IPFS node within uh, web browser. I feel this is like a prerequisite for any work uh, that is done uh, by your working group. Uh, or at least it provides a better user experience when someone wants to quickly start playing with stuff. They can, for example, right now, they can just install uh, IPFS compile for a beta channel and uh, can switch to an embedded node and play with uh, 
event pops up. You are able, thanks to Alan's uh, patch, we are able to initialize uh, embedded node uh, with arbitrary configuration. So you can play with uh, uh, swarm uh, configurations and uh, pops up and stuff like that. So that's my main interest. And I, I guess I, I, I won't be actively, like uh, maybe not, not from the beginnings helping, but I, I'm very interested uh, with uh, this uh, this uh, use of our APIs, and we'll see what will happen next. Cool, Brandon. Okay. Yeah. Hi. So <clears throat> my name is Brandon O'Brien. Um, I'm the founder of a project called Query. We're building Git for data sets on IPFS, and uh, we're really interested in. A lot of things that touch the um, the dynamic data side of things. Um, our current sort of architecture is structured as an overlay network on top of an overlay network, and we have sort of we're confronting the identity problems, access control problems, and uh, pin tracking under churn problems uh, in real ways. Um, so we're really excited to sort of just like get messy, share notes, try and collaborate in ways that can hopefully advance a number of these issues. And so anything I can do to sort of help um, contribute to the thinking happening here. Uh, I'd be super excited to, to do so. Um, we also have, a, our code is completely open, and so um, we'll be happily sort of sharing and tracking anything as we sort of make developments here. But uh, one of our big sort of driving forces of the company is trying to avoid sort of inventing new specifications if we can just use somebody else's. Um, so as some of this consensus emerges, we'd be really excited to sort of make things as interoperable as possible. Cool, that's awesome. Um, yeah, we. If you want to, for instance, chime in into the the issues that 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 we have there, um, or or post or post questions or put your insights links, it's yeah. all it's all helpful. Yeah, we're really looking forward to that. I want to take a good look at CRDTs before I get um, super uh, connected to it because for us, uh, we have a little a little less need for live sort of collaborative editing, but that's definitely sort of like the concept of a session or the concept of sort of um, a live session is really important to us um, sort of in the longer term. Um, so I'm interested to see like how to, whether a CRDT is a good application at like scales in the sort of 300 to thousands of peers range. Uh, that sounds a little terrifying, but I'm, mainly it's because of my lack of familiarity with the technology. Um, but, uh, it's kind of be interesting. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, really looking forward to have the conversations happening here. Super cool. Thank you. Uh, Viso? Yeah, uh, I'm Viso. I work on PubSub uh, and stuff, and I'm very interested to see what kind of uh, applications you guys are coming uh, up with. Because it seems to me that if you want to have dynamic data capabilities in a multi-user setting, you need a mechanism for real-time distribution of uh, set data between the participants, and that's where Pops Up is coming in. So I have vested interest uh, on that as, you know, like our, uh, the, the, flood sub, the new flood sub owner, you know, like um, I'd like to, to make sure that uh, what, uh, whatever we come up with works well for your needs. Thank you. Definitely very helpful to have a pub sub, uh, scalable pub, pub sub implementation on IPFS. Cool. Um, Oli, I think that next to you. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Oli, Oli Zilla. Um, uh, I've been building web apps for many years, um, notably worked with Pedro and Alan building the first iteration of PeerPad, um, and now working with uh, Lidl on um, IPFS in web browsers and the IPFS GUIs, so building out, uh, rebuilding the existing GUIs to better demonstrate what we're capable of. Um, and so the big interest in the CRDTs and what Pedro has been working on, A, it's the future, and it, I just think it's super exciting. Uh, and B, we want to make sure that, that we understand it well enough to start expanding the developer ecosystem around people building IP, apps that use Windows IPFS and how, you know, how they can do the mutable data on top of the permanent web and that kind of thing. Um, so interested because it's technically exciting and interested because we have to be able to explain it to, to people who haven't been staring at this for the last 12 months. Awesome. David, want to go next? 
Thanks, Julian. My turn. Uh, cool. Hi, everyone. I'm Veen. Uh, I lead the Jazz at PFS and Jazz Security projects, amongst other random things. Uh, I guess I'm one of the original instigators to get the CRDT work to start get started on IPFS land. And I've been just in sync with Pedro throughout the entire development. Super excited for all of this and what it enables. Um, I am really excited for all the apps that will be able to be created with like these building blocks that will come out of this working group. And yeah, fun stuff. Cool. Um, Alan, wanna go next? Yes, the mute button it was evading me. Uh, hello, I'm Alan. <laughs> Uh, I'm also part of the web browsers uh, working group, so I'm here for trolling purposes only. <laughs> Joking. Uh, so, yeah, just interested in this. Uh, like Ollie said, well, I did a bit of work on Peerpad for making it look pretty uh, when it first came out, um, and that was awesome. And uh, I've been working a lot with, uh, as li Little said, on IPFS Companion. I've uh, been adding. Um, uh, window.ipfs so in ipfs companion whenever you visit a website it will add a window.ipfs object and i'm hoping to send a pr to peerpad pretty soon to take advantage of that if it's if someone's got the um the web extension um, available uh, and if window.ipfs is available then use that instead of um your own bundled one which would be rad so uh yeah that's me yeah Thank you, Alan. Uh, is there anyone else here? Um, there is. Siraha, right? Siraha, yeah. Oh, here, here he is. Okay, go ahead. Hi. Uh, Hi, my name is Harsha, actually. Uh, I'm working on an uh, application, web application, uh, based on CRDT pops up. Um, are you able to hear me? Uh, Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, I've been doing a kind of a bit torrent for shopping. So uh, it's like everybody is going to maintain the price history of the product and everybody is going to share the data of the market. So currently we have applications like Honey or Camel, 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 uh, but they are using uh, several client architectures. So I, I just want to make it decentralized. Uh, I made in uh, 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 one sec. Uh, I'll show you. Okay, one more. So I just made it a uh, dummy uh, pub sub app. Uh, so you just think like you have nine products or something like that. Uh, and you you set a price like two hundred, then maybe one fifty. In reality, you don't add, add the prices. Uh, uh, you have a Chrome extension which tracks the price. Uh, so, say suppose you have an another user who is going to uh, need the price graph of that product data. He he, he wants the price price history. Uh, he just goes on. Oh, yeah, it's connected. Is it up there? Yeah, so uh, so the data is basically pop subbing from uh, one user to other user. So everybody is sharing uh, the price history of the current market. So you just need to, this is a, just a web app, which I made it, but I just want to create a Chrome extension based on this, like, like a competitor to Honey. 
Cool. Yeah. And you're using uh, PubSub for this, not CRDTs? Uh, I'm using YJS connector. Oh, okay, okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah. It's based on your project. Okay, okay. Cool. Nice. Um, do you want to add that to the, make it like a pull request, for instance? And add that to some, yeah, uh, that, that the, the homepage for the working group? Uh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't get you. I feel you can, uh, if there is a product, if you can, you can also oh, that add, add it to, to the working group homepage. Yeah, okay. Yeah, sure. Would like a pull request. That would be yeah. great. Thank you. Cool. Is there anyone else? Um, okay. Um, can you stop share? Can you stop yeah. sharing? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Cool. All right. Got a review. Let me see who else. All right. Uh, I think that's that's everyone. Great. Um, all right. So, um, is there any any questions uh, related to the working group um, of what to discuss or what things you want to discuss further? We ha we have a few minutes that we can still use. Yeah, Lionel, go ahead. Um, it's like something I've noticed today on the IPFS IRC channel. Someone was uh, having problems with, uh, uh, I think it was Y IPFS connector and using all their uh, multi other formats. Uh, not sure if you are familiar with that, but I think there are multiple pull requests related to that. And my question is, uh, who is maintaining the developer responsible for making new releases, uh, reviewing uh, pull requests and stuff like that, so. Pedro, I think you're muted. And I think I'm not muted. Yeah. Oh. Hopefully. <laughs> I was muted. I was oh, not. Okay. Sorry. I was uh, scared should, that I am. Sorry, it should be me. Uh, so uh, I just released uh, a new version of YPFS Connected today. I'm, I, was, I was on vacation last week. Uh, so version 2.2.2, oh, okay. okay. which uses a new uh, IPFS pop sub room version. Um, so I'm not actively using this this package, but I, I'm I'm maintaining maintaining it. So which is basically accepting yeah. pull requests. Yeah, and, yeah uh, like uh, I've seen like there was a create a dial function, right? Can you repeat so that? I think that one. Sorry, uh, I've seen a lot of issues across multiple repositories re related to renaming uh, swarm dial function to something yeah. else. Yeah, yeah. So that's what a change in, in the latest IPFS version, uh, which uh, needs to be to be tested uh, in some in some packages and re and, and new versions must come out. Uh, yeah, I was in the middle of, of that the previous week, uh, so I'm going to. Okay. Yeah, I like I I, I, I felt that someone was like trying bleeding edge code and <laughs> having some trouble. So I just wanted to. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Make yeah, sure. yeah. Yeah, um, if you sure. can no, no problem. point me to the uh, the RC uh, or uh, that would be would be great. Um, oh, I think you've already like close to the one I had in mind. Uh, it was like PR ten in uh, Y IPFS connector. Oh, it's merged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that, hanging, that... hanging out there for for some time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Cool. Um, well, Pe Pedro, uh, yeah. I have I have questions. Like, how do you try to authenticate uh, fields getting into the pub tab? Like, how do you authenticate them into this room? Right. Right. Right now, we have a very crude mechanism for authentication on the applications that we're building. So, namely, PeerPad, uh, yeah. which which is really just passing 
a key on the hash path hash of the URL. So it's mm -hmm. like a way of off passing a key off band. Um, theoretically, you could transmit those over uh, any other channel. Uh, so just just a bunch of keys. There's a read key and there's a write key. There, uh, a read key allows you to follow the CRDT, so to follow the changes, but doesn't allow you to make any changes. The write key makes you allows you to make make changes. So the basically when you write something, you sign it and encrypt it. And when you when you you create an operation, you sign it and encrypt it. And the operation uh, being signed uh, can be validated by other peers. And if the the validation fails, uh, you don't you don't incorporate that change into your CRDT. So that's a very crude way of of having that because anyone with the with the right key can send that right key to someone else, and then we don't have any control over over that. Uh, so that's basically something that we need to tackle on on the next uh, few weeks, which is a way first to identify peers in a, in a secure way. Uh, so basically, IPFS has a, a public key or, so, or an ID that is derived from the public key. And that's a way to identify a peer. And peers internally have a, a private key that corresponds to that public key. And that and we could use that mechanism to tie that identity into another identity outside of IPFS, um, still to be discussed or implemented in several ways. And then have a way to transmit admin rights over certain resources in a secure way. Um, over using those identities that we just created, uh, or or any other way, but uh, I, that's the path that that is most obvious to to me. So yeah, mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of pending work on on that area. There's a lot of research also on that area. I've listed okay. a bunch of of research, uh, well, research and actual implementations on on identity and access control management. Uh, we need we need. Uh, we need to, to pick as a group, we need to pick uh, one or, or more and, and implement them and see where, where it leads. Okay. That, that would be my, my, my suggestion for, for that. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yeah, totally. Cool. B5? Yeah, is there somewhere we're gonna collect up this research? Do we have like a spot? Do we want it all to hit that GitHub repo or? What's the, the plan? Uh, this is, plan? Well, uh, there is a bunch of, of um, well, yeah, there, there's, I mean, there's like an issue for each one of these things that are, that are and more that are, we can track that there. And there's also, in terms of richer, uh, CRDT research, uh, well, CRDTs don't really tackle identity or access control. They're they're more um, they're they work over a, a, a network of trusted nodes. Uh, so on top of that, or underneath that, depends on the way you're looking at it, we have to build uh, uh, some way to, to for nodes to to be able to trust each other. And so, well, you can uh, either add that to research CRDT, um repo or or that here in in this. So basically, the working group. We we uh, we should first identify all all the the, the set of yards uh, and and then list that there and then people will discuss over and and collect articles and 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 then we will people will then maybe create other issues that, that tackle specific implementations of of that for instance if I want to do implementation of viewport which is a, a way to identify. Um, to, to manage identity uh, on an, in a decentralized manner. People can create a new issue here or create a new repo and then point uh, that, that issue to that, that repo. Um, it's, it's kind of open. Uh, I want to have a, a waffle board also to track, track the, the, all the issues and perhaps have multiple, um, multiple repos on, on the same board. I don't know if that, that's possible. But but yeah, uh, you have any suggestion, Brennan? Um, yeah, I think it, it, it's not much of an extension on uh, what you just mentioned here. I'm just going to paste uh, in chat sort of what we, we've used in other um, parts. We have this uh, data together project um, where we've had to do a similar thing where we have to do a lot of landscape analysis just to understand 
sort of what exists so that someone can get a quick overview of like uh, some of the concept of identity. And so we've, um, with this data together research repository, it's been very similar where you just folders and readme.md files in a GitHub repo. And you can very quickly sort of drill into a topic that you think is uh, pertinent. And then pull requesting into that with additions and changes becomes a little bit easier. Um, but it's effectively just an extension on exactly what you just said, basically using some sort of GitHub repo and it's basically an organizational choice above all else. But um, more than happy to do that as issues or whatever, but it's, uh, uh, I think the most important thing is just being able to get that quick overview of, okay, where, what's the list of documents that are worth checking out? What are people sort of finding useful? Right, if it's something that, that we're going, yeah, we're going to produce and collect, uh, we could also add, add uh, documents to, to this repo. Um, right, right now, until we exhaust the, the issues, like if issues become very hard to, to scan, uh, we can then, then, then come up with some other way. We can revisit, revisit this in, in two weeks, perhaps, and, and see what goes. But that, that research, if it relates to these topics, uh, perhaps uh, it would be helpful just, just to, point, um, uh, to point from this dynamic uh, data capabilities issues into like a specific, mm -hmm. uh, specific set of documents. Um, that, that would be great, so we can... We can also share the knowledge and, and, and comment. But That's great, yeah. So I think we started start with issues and just keep going with that. And so I'll try and jump in there. Cool. Uh, one note though, like, I think we are actually not that starting from scratch. Like there is already a bunch of issues on the research charity repo and the dynamic data. Uh, Brennan, like if you, if you have some time, um, like to, to check it out. Uh, I actually kind of like, like the work that Pedro did with the labels and like you have labels to tell if it's research or if it's uh, an implementation question rather than actually like studying the landscape. And then you have like labels if it's related with identity or CRDT specifically um, and ACLs. And so there's like some work here. It needs to be, again, exponent more because this has been mostly Pedro uh, gathering notes from conversations with folks that are in this call and other folks. And so we, we just need to have more people like bouncing ideas back and forth, make sure that the notes get us just right. <laughs> yep. Cool. Uh, I have a uh, one question and one point, which um, I, I, I have my question to the crit tab. I don't know if people are following that. Okay, can I can I go for it? Mm -hmm. Sure. Sweet. Okay, so I will start with my question first, which is so right now, like the web. I'm glad that the web browsers working group is here because they have been not only in injecting IPFS into web browsers through an extension or through integration or even through a desktop application, they actually started the work of providing nicer APIs for web developers to like have access to FS capability, like the ability for a web developer to request access to specific features of IPFS. And so those are things that are outside of like the IPFS, the core protocol. It's more like, again, it's, it's more of a building block to build these applications. And so I'm really interested to understand um, that if there is a need for a CRDD like key value store, to be part of the IPFS collection of tools that web developers will get used to by default. Or if there isn't even like a generic thing that we can actually put it there for any web developer to use. Um, and, and then like if that question, if that answer is no, and if everything has to be specific, because CRD typically are specific for their own data type, then how can we best guide developers to understand what is going on? and to like then inject those extra functionalities, those extra features into, for example, the IPFS uh, Chrome extension, or the IPFS web extension, right? Like, can they grab it all as one package and, and, and have access? Uh, and so the like, web browsers people want to share some thoughts, like if you already have asked this yourselves. Cool, why don't I ask a hand? Uh, not sure if it's a direct answer to your 
question, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, we have something like a proof of concept when it comes to providing API, like providing some sugar coating for web developer or distributed app developer when it comes to MFS. So what we did uh, is uh, we prefix all paths for writes and reads from uh, IPFS files API with some like path that is scoping uh, access of every app to a specific subtree of entire IPFS files uh, tree, right? So what this means is that uh, it provides isolation between data that was uh, written to IPFS files uh, by different apps so that apps cannot uh, change each other's data. So that's like a first experiment on a big road uh, to providing some sugar coating on top of existing APIs. It's like, it's the same API. What we do, we like transparently uh, prefix all, all writes and reads. And what is related to this is that what should be user experience? And I think I've, I'm not sure if I had like this discussion. I think I, I started this, uh, talking about this yesterday, but my laptop overheated. So if it will overheat once again. <laughs> uh, so I'll try to, to, to uh, like keep it minimal. Uh, so the user experience of current web is that browser does not ask you to allow it to have access to local storage or save cookies uh, and stuff like that. There, there is no dialogue. Do you want to allow this website to like uh, set uh, local storage under some limit, right? And I think when we design those sugar coatings for different APIs, we should, while we design them or while we think about them, we should always think, should it be something that is allowed by default via uh, and security is provided by some way of sandboxing data and that uh, like i always uh, think we should go the sandboxing way route instead of nagging user uh, with uh, dialogues when possible uh, Otherwise, we'll like end up, it's my like favorite example is the Windows Vista user access controls. That's just people, the, it, it, it was like the horror of training users to don't read anything and just blindly accept all. Yeah, so I really don't want to go that route. And I think what we could do is uh, to go this sandboxing way root that's like my thought not sure if it answers your like general question or if it's useful but i just wanted to no, it is a it is a very good answer uh and you just made me laugh because like probably the windows people went exactly through the same question right like they they had the same question and the decision was let's just ask the user ask for everything the user. it's going to be yeah, <laughs> yeah what can go wrong right yeah it's really it's more like division of responsibility for them, I think. <laughs> yeah, but like when you ask generally, like, should you give the decision the power for the user to decide or not? I guess like the default answer will be like, of course, like always let the user decide. But when you like are asking the user to decide on 300 different things, then it's not a decision anymore. It's just like a reflex of like, yes, just clicking yes. Um, that's a very good point. And, and so, um, yeah, thank you for your answer. I have like a couple of like random ideas in my head from, for example, uh, having almost like a, 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 I don't know, building block store where you can almost say, oh, I want the Tevera database or I want the YJS thing. And then like you click yes, adds to my IPFS in the web browser extension, uh, IPFS node. And, and suddenly then uh, I, PFS devs can have access to those APIs as well. Mm -hmm. And so there, there's like a lot of questions here, like what should be there. And also like, I, I, I want to have a map of like, it's, it's basically a simple map, a line in the middle, and then there's like a PFS core, the protocol, and then user land. And like, 
we need to have a way to like move pieces from user land to core and also from core to user land when we realize like they are not the best building blocks anymore. Um, but maybe that's for the future. I see a couple of hands. Uh, Alan, I guess, first, and then I think it was Brennan, yeah. Yeah, uh, so just to kind of, I, I think what Little Lada was trying to say is, um, I guess web extensions might be a good place to try out uh, features. Like if you were thinking about exposing like raw IPFS CRDTs uh, to the user in core IPFS, then you could, we could try it out in uh, in the web extension in window.ipfs. Like we can add that in quite quickly and easily and, and see if, it, if people are actually, if actually start using it. And if it does gain traction, then it could quite easily be be then put into window.ipfs is kind of what you were saying, David. You know, we need a way to figure out what, what should and shouldn't be in core. And that, I'm just saying that that might, you know, using, making use of web extension, making use of desktop in that way might be one way to do it. Um, and so I, I think Lida was just saying, you know, we, we've added this whole um, MFS scoping to uh, Companion. Uh, and that's just one example where we've, we've done something that isn't explicitly in, um, in IPFS and we've also got this whole permissions, this idea of permissions for IPFS that also isn't in IPFS, but is, I think has been discussed previously and hasn't, we haven't got a consensus of how that should work, but we've added something that works and, and, uh, and it's just an example of uh, things that we can try out in the web extension um, that, that could then be, the ideas from that can be iterated on quite quickly or changed without um, just releasing a new version of IPFS with a half-baked idea or something in it we can we can sort of we have a mechanism for trying stuff out yeah and I think I'd, I'd actually I, 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 at, uh, at the risk of blowing the scope of this conversation too far open um, I'm wondering if some of the sort of natural conclusion of some of this starts to look a little bit like OAuth for the D-Web where we're starting to think about uh, you've got like an MFS store and so I, maybe I'm writing an application that wants to request a certain amount of resources and uh, some of this sort of um, extra sort of app developer friendly stuff is starting to provide identity sort of solutions out of the box that are uh, ideally derived from the public key or the pure ID of the underlying IPFS node. And so you can sort of say, hey, this is, this is who I am. This identity can travel, this identity can be moved around and manipulated. And there's, I, I love to live in a world where there's sort of something that looks a lot like OAuth where we take away a lot of these. Now, when I say OAuth, the good bits of OAuth, not the really disgusting bits of auth, <laughs> but the uh, but where we have sort of a um, a scheme in place for how are these apps going to communicate with each other? I think one of the things we got wrong with the original internet was this like question of different um, sort of services communicating with one another on behalf of other parties, and OAuth has become a very thick specification for dealing with that sort of stuff. And so while I know it's extremely early to be having this conversation. It'd be really exciting if we could sort of take some of the conversations we're having now and suit them in a context of like, what does it look like to have a rich ecosystem of applications on the distributed web that are able to communicate with each other? Like we're doing a bunch of stuff surrounding making data available and structured and validatable. And we'd love to just see that be an interchangeable block with anything else that operates in the D-Web. And it would be great if the identity systems that we were participating in weren't reinventing this wheel of, of managing access control and sort of, it'd be great to have those. I love some of the permission screens that have come out of um, proper OAuth integrations. It makes makes my life easier. So I'd love to see that you know trans, trans that bit transfer over. And if we can bring down the developer overhead of learning OAuth and any of that garbage, that would be really cool in my opinion. Yeah, there's there's a bunch of related work on self uh, sovereign sovereignty. Uh, I think that's I'm not, I'm not sure how to spell it. Yeah, are, uh, are you familiar with that? Right. Yeah. So no, it's like, it's like yeah, it's like it's like a way a way to well to store uh, claims, to store proofs, and to store um, yeah claims and proofs uh, on 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 a local machine. So uh, on a lab, laptop or or a phone. Well, the idea generally is that a so user can uh, only provide to the application the specific uh, claim or specific proof. That, that application needs, for instance, uh, I need to prove that I'm over 18 years old. So I have this proof and I'm going to deliver that to the, uh, that application without handing over all my identity data, just that proof. 
Um, so I'm in control of, of, of my identity and who I provide proofs to. Um, so I think that's, that could really work well with something like a browser extension or even a mobile, um, mobile application in, in the style of OAuth, very loosely. Yeah. Totally. I'm very excited to look at that. I, I think the really exciting thing here that is that we could also be requesting access to resources that are sort of traditionally because you're operating on a machine that can serve up storage and compute. I think there's some exciting things to sort of extend that. But yeah, I'll definitely look into the self sovereign sovereignty. Sovereignty. Uh, <laughs> there's a, a bunch. Of, yeah, there's lots of diff. I think. Uh, I, well, I'll, I'll I'll paste the the issue that that tracks identity on on the working group. I'll paste some some more links that, that I've been researching lately uh, on that on that subject. Uh, which well, identity is not something that I'm tackling right now personally, but someone needs to. So I'm just going to put those links over there, and someone. Hopefully, someone will will uh, absorb those. Those. Yeah, totally. Um, and in terms of what you said, David, I think in terms of having like like a, I totally agree. Namespacing um, uh, is is necessary. In terms of CRDTs, specific CRDTs, uh, maybe a bit too early to to do that uh, because. Uh, we're still experimenting a bit for uh, for instance just just to give a quick example in terms of scaling operational crdts um, rely on causal delivery of messages and there is like uh, uh, so uh, state by alpha state by crdts which only tra transmit the state but only the differences uh, when they are required um, are a way for us to solve that snapshotting problem issue uh, and it's kind of early research also, but I think it can be applicable. Um, so just just to name, just to show an example of of uh, of how we still need to try different things. But I, I totally agree. Having that bundled into um, browser extension that people can or uh, can opt in into, like developers can opt in into uh, and use would. would I think would pave the way for dApps. I agree. David, I think I lost David, right? No. Say, sorry. Say it again. Which part? The the last three words. Did you say my name and something else? Oh, I think I lost. No, I I, I was searching for you. Okay, I'm still here. <laughs> um, I have one more point, but I can wait if someone else has something to say to each other. Yeah, can, I, can I go? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, cool. So the only or, or one small thing that happened today, it was kind of like a, a reorg of the peer dApps building blocks on the IPFS API repo. So after after some work that Fritzi and and Dale and others from and yet uh, that have been doing on building a block with IPFS and basically taking some of the work that Peter did with CRDTs and capabilities for PeerPad and like just creating a general platform so that like you can build apps with uh, out the platform and that can be a blog, can be a forum. Like it should like be capable to support multiple use cases. Um, so with all of that development and that conversation, we basically decided, okay, let's let's just like create this kind of like small slash large endeavor of not necessarily creating like complete apps, but actually just like testing the technology, testing these building blocks, getting the conversation going, getting the examples going, creating like this open product, so like peer path, peer blog, peer forum, etc., peer chat, all using these primitives, these cryptographic uh, ACL primitives, and, and more. And so now you can like check out on like the UPI repo again, like the organization, the, the, the cleanup was done this morning. So it's pretty simple right now, but like you can see there's a list already of like the apps that have been built or that are in progress, uh, peer path, uh, peer flip chart, peer blog. Then there is like the building blocks, peer path core. And that, that is what is getting transformed into becoming like the peer platform. Um, and then like peer CDT, peer CDT APFS, uh, called mirror and and also some examples and so ideally 
in the soon future, you will have apps that you are familiar with that like you have built in the centralized web. So like you know what are the challenges and you will have a version for the decentralized web. And so you can better map your knowledge from one to the other and like understand how to do things that you are used to on the centralized web. And, and again, like this will open, like, like we'll create many questions and like uh, we'll, it will be a very informative exercise because it will just like stretch everything that we've been building still to the max. Um, and, and yeah, I'm excited about this too. So I guess like Super. My, it's, my point is a plug, not necessarily a question. <laughs> <laughs> My comment is that this is super, really. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, but awesome. Everything every, that everyone has been doing. I, I just really cleaned the repos and created the story. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I think we're like three minutes over time. Um, I don't know if anyone, if everyone can, can still hang out. Anyone wants, has another comment or question? Yeah, Alan. Yeah, hey, just quickly, really quickly. Um, one of our goals is to create a, a, a place where people can register for using window.ipfs, like a website kind of like experiments on, uh, like on the Chrome experiments website. Um, and it would be cool if we had some cross pollination in there, all register different apps and app types and stuff like that. Pedro, you muted again. Um, Sorry, or, I was saying good idea. <laughs> uh, anyone, anyone else wants to chime in? No, cool. So let me see the gallery view if anyone is done. All right, cool. Um, so everyone, thanks for coming. Thank you for participating on the first one. Hope to see you in like two weeks, if not before. Bye bye. Thank you so much for hosting and getting everyone together. No. Let's continue the chat. No. Hopefully soon on an IPFS based video chat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Have a good week. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye. Are you good?